Everyone, welcome to Horse Traffic Games of Part 9. You've all been incredibly awesome. Thank you all so much for your support. We're going to be doing something a little unorthodox today. We're going to be going into uh, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 as our first game. And you're going to be wondering why Tekken? Think in a movie, Karate Kid, where Miyagi had Ralph Macchio do a whole myriad of tasks and challenges that seemingly had no impact on his training or fighting ability. And in the end, they truly did. We're going to be picking a solo character, Kane Ryu, one of the most difficult to start with characters. And we're going to get the show on the road here. Typically, you'd uh, start a new action or fighting game and get right to the fray of things by mashing buttons. But sometimes you have to truly take a step back, analyze the situation, enemies, and environments, and learn how to counterattack and act accordingly to the moveset and environmental hazards. And we're going to be playing this as the name of the game today. Defense is our main offense. So I'm going to go up and just mash the button here. Which is not hard, but I'm playing against an easy difficulty level. But what if I run to somebody that's more experienced or I'm on a harder difficulty as far as the CPU uh, opponent is concerned? Ultra hard difficulty, me against two computer controlled opponents here. Let's see if I could uh, use defense as my main offense here. I'm going to wait for them to uh, try to attack me, then react accordingly. Look at that! I got this. Okay, two more rounds. Let's make these count. And I usually don't throw if I'm in a, a human battle because that's kind of cheesy. Play the ground game, come on now. Okay, one more round. And I got a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on to the next game here because remember defense is the name of the game today. We're going to be playing Bloodborne on PlayStation 4. And my cat actually bumped my keyboard so it kind of threw me up on the second round there. And unfortunately uh, Bloodborne is only on PlayStation 4. I hate to be a fanboy but it is only on PlayStation 4. Great game, I'm going to start from scratch here. Oh, yeah. It's by the same company from Software that made uh, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 and 3D Dot Game Heroes. I'm going to enter my name here. And this game right here is not a game where you could use offense as your main defense. It does not work out whatsoever. But I'm starting from scratch here so you can get a little bit of a genesis qual as far as an introduction to this game is concerned. But if you have any means to play this game and you, uh, you know on a PlayStation 4, definitely check it out. But you can still play Dark Souls uh, 2 and 3 on both Xbox One and PlayStation 4. But I'd really love to see From Software do kind of a collection like Capcom did with the Mega Man Legacy Collections and X Collections and Konami too. But I'd really love to see these games all on Xbox One and of course PS4. But we're starting this game from scratch and uh, this is very, very cool because uh, I'm going to explain a few uh, things to the game as we go through it here. Even though many games you play, including God of War, Devil May Cry, you can actually level up your character, stats and such, you can actually start this game out as a very, very low stat character and make it through the entire game only getting the items that you need to beat the game. It is entirely skill based. The entire game from beginning to end is all about skill. Not mashing. You cannot mash in this game. But one of the first challenges you encounter and always check out your environments. Great, great atmosphere, sound effects, music, gameplay, music, everything. There's an enemy in the background here. 
And right now I do not have a single weapon on me, so I'd be a complete masochist, a fool, a buffoon to even try to take on this enemy. So I'm actually just going to let him take me out right now. Just let him take you out is the best thing to do the first time you play it. Okay, and then we're going to transport back to the main hub. Pay attention to the top right where I have 300 blood echoes. That is actually the currency for the game. Whenever you die in the game, all your blood echoes drop exactly where you died, and you have one single chance to recover them. If you do not recover them with that single chance, they're gone, and you have to refarm them. Yes, you have to refarm them all. So it is a bit of a risk-reward system, which I'm going to showcase in the game as we do this for a few minutes. But right when you start out in the main hub here, if you go to your left, you have a little bit of a bath here. You could uh, buy upgrades and such. You know, should I say buy and sell items, not quite upgrades. But I do not need to do that right now. And then of course we have uh, the tombstones here, which unlock different environmental areas. And this is more or less like a Metroidvania game, but with a little bit of a darker gothic theme. Except gift from messengers, you need to do that first before you get into the fray of the action. I get to choose my starter weapon, a Saw Cleaver, a Hunter Axe, or a Threaded Cane. I'm going to pick the slower but more powerful Hunter Axe. Then I get to pick a gun weapon, a Hunter Pistol, or a Hunter Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss has better spread but shorter range. Hunter Pistol is uh, not as versatile, it could break, it's not as durable, but it has nice range. So I'm going to pick that as my starter weapon. And as you get more Blood Echoes, you can actually uh, buy all of these later on. And a notebook is my third one. And of course, I need to equip these weapons. I'll uh, equip my uh, Hunter Axe in my right hand. And uh, I'll put my Hunter Pistol in my left hand. Then I'm going to go back to the area where the werewolf was. And again, you cannot simply go up and mash. You're going to see exactly what happens if you do that. I'm going to give you a prime example. But again, this game is entirely skill-based, so yes, you can be very low level. The first time you play it, it is maddeningly difficult, but then you see that it is all about skill, and you can truly learn. And go back to the first area from a later area, and it is easy. But never too easy. There is always a chance of you being taken down by even the lowliest of enemies. And when you play in online mode, somebody's nose can be left by human players. And one of the first things you need to learn is the circle button does a back stop. That is a nice dodge move to get out of the enemy's attack range really quick. Since I'm fighting one enemy here, I'm going to try to... I can do R1 for a light attack, R2 for a strong attack. I'm going to go up and just try to take this enemy out. I'm going to try to mash my way through this enemy. Now, it doesn't always work that way, though. I got my blood echoes back. And always check your environments because you can find more blood echoes, bullets, and all kinds of good stuff. Blood vials come in handy. You can use the triangle button to restore your health with those. Now we're going to really get into the thick of the action. Before we move on to the mini SNES and do a few more games. And again, uh, From Software made Demon Souls, which is on PS3, very much like the Dark Souls games. A predecessor, in essence. They made Bloodborne on PS4, and then, of course, Dark Souls 2 and 3 on Xbox One and PS4. And I have to say, personally, I love uh, Demon Souls the most. It is a great, great game. But, uh, I might showcase the other game that they made called 3D Game Arrows, because it is an incredible game to boot. Always pay attention to your environment. You never know when an enemy's gonna be around the next corner or come up and surprise attack you. And again, this is a really cool thing here. I see an enemy lurking in the background there, walking with a torch. I'm going to try to dodge his attack and wait for his uh, stamina to reduce. Okay. More blood vials. Always check out your environments. I mean, this area right alone, the first time you play it, you might be stuck for five to ten minutes trying to figure out where to go next. 
there's not so much a puzzle as far as uh, what you really need to do, and I'm going to show you that, but it's really cool how you can look down at areas you did not even get to yet. That is incredibly cool. Kind of like the first time I played uh, Black Flag Assassin's Creed on PlayStation 4 and saw that true distance that seemingly never ended. But yes, yeah, so all you have to do is just go up to this lever and pull it. But make sure there are no enemies that can sneak up on you because they can come out of anywhere. Very, very cool game. One of the best on PlayStation 4. And very much like Ninja Game where you cannot simply mash or hack and slash. Ooh, listen to that. Foreshadow and you you get to see that creature later on in this level. I'm not gonna tell you when though. But pay attention to your environment. You never know who's around what corner, what to expect. Pebbles, which are a great distractant. Look, I can see enemies that I'm going to be coming up against very soon. I'm going to add a quick item as a pebble so I can de distract enemies. Like my cat distracting me in Tekken. I see a guy lurking around the corner there. I'm going to try to do this carefully. He staggered because of his stamina running out. There's another nifty thing. Right now I have uh, two one-handed weapons here. I have uh, an axe in my right hand and a gun in my left hand. But if I push nail one, I can transform whichever of the three weapons I start with into a two-handed weapon. A beast mode, should I say. And I'm going to use a little bit of another gimmick here. There's a stealth ability in the game. I'm going to try to sneak up on this enemy here. Sneak up, tiptoe, and take him out with my beast weapon. If you do it appropriately, you hear a little ding noise and you can do an R1 to finish him off. There we go. Success. You can do that from the front as well, but you have to do it a different way. You have to use your gun to do it. Molotov cocktails. Can't go wrong there. And again, don't run into the thick of things. Right now I have 689 blood echoes, but if I die, I'll lose them exactly where I died and have one single chance to recover them. I'm going to try to use a pebble here. I can use the right analog to target an enemy. I'll throw a pebble at him. Get the hell out of dodge here. Let him come to me. It'd help if I use one of these uh, blood uh, files here. They give me a little more health. Yes, the enemies are pretty tricky if you do not dodge their attacks. See, I'm trying to mash it, doesn't always work. You need to wait and react accordingly. I'm going to use some of these Molotov cocktails to give me a little bit of an edge here. And again, you can't pause the game. If you pause it, you're still in the thick of action. But one thing I'd like to notate is, uh, let me uh, get these uh, Molotov cocktails here. One thing I'd like to notate here is if you want to pause it, just go to the home menu and resume. And that's pausing it in essence. A little bit of a cheat there. That'll take him down. I seem to be dragging an enemy here. Talk about a little bit of a glitch. But yes, pay close attention to your surroundings here. You never know who's around what corner. Anybody can be anywhere. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to take out the guy with the shield first. And then I'm going to go to the left and take that guy out with the torch. Oh, of course somebody comes up and attacks me from behind. Screw it! Libra Jenkins!
<laughs> That's what happens when you try doing the Leroy Jenkins. Doesn't work out too well, does it? Now I'm going to show you one more technique before we move over to the mini SNES and do a few more horse travel games. I'm going to show you the other way, the frontwards uh, technique as far as doing your defense. Defense does an offense. But I have one single chance to recover my blood echoes because right now I lost everything. I could have gone back to that bath and bought everything. Like more bullets, more blood files and such. But I'm going to go back. And I actually could have started a different place. I forgot to light the torch. I'll show you when I get up there so I don't have to do this a second time. There was a checkpoint that I completely missed. But I'm going to use a one-handed weapon here and uh... See, I got to do this all over again just because I didn't go to the checkpoint. So there's my flub for today. But if I target the enemy and wait for him to attack, I can shoot him with a bullet at the precise moment he attacks. Watch. And you stagger them, and you can do a finishing move. Very, very cool stuff there. But I'm going to show you where the checkpoint is so you don't have to do this part all over again like I did. It's essentially right when you get up these stairs. I missed it completely. Just a torch that you have to light. Kind of like your bonfires in uh, Final Fantasy and such. Right here. All I had to do is light this and I would have started right here. But yes, incredible game, and I'll do one more uh, attack here on an enemy. See if I can stagger this guy as well with my gun. Again, target the enemy and wait for the precise moment they attack you and shoot him with a bullet. I wasn't close enough to do the finishing move, but I'll try it one more time here. Why not? Not close enough again. Oh, jeez. There we go. Great fit and end to the game here. And I'm going to uh, power my system down right now. And go to the mini SNES and we'll do a few more horse drive against the games. And we're going to do Demon's Crest as we should have done. I ran out of time in my last video. But Demon's Crest is part of the Gargoyles Quest series. And it is an incredible offshoot of the Ghosts and Goblins series. Great, great game. And where Ghosts and Goblins is extremely difficult, incredibly frustrating, this game is actually so much easier. It is average difficulty at best. And for the record, I run most SNES games with SNES 9X 2005. Most games run better on this core, faster. But if you're running uh, BSX Broadband Satellaview so games, or BSX games, should I say, or MSU1 games, you know, the CD, uh, SNES games with CD soundtracks, run them on SNES 9X 2016 or Bright. Right now, I'm also running uh, shaders, load shader, with RetroArchive Stream. I'm running the 2X style shader right now, which gives it a nice, clean appearance. It doesn't work on all cores, just test it out. If you get a little bit of a slower frame rate, change it right back to stock GOSLP, which I'll show you before the end of this video. But great, great game, and it actually has multiple endings to the game. You cannot just beat it and be done. You can get multiple endings. But fantastic game. If you love games like Metroid and Gargoyles Quest, you'll be right at home here. But we got a few more games to check out. Okay, let's take out the Bone Dragon here. And I love that you have a glide attack, you know, a glide, should I say. Really, really cool here. And again, if you're playing Ghosts and Goblins or Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins, you'd be pretty much done in two hits. Here it is a little more lenient. Much easier to dodge the attacks. <laughs> Oops. 
great music here. Oh, jeez, am I going to lose on the first boss here? The first mini boss, should I say? One more hit, he should be done. Okay. I'm absolutely loving this gothic uh, scenario here. Really, really cool graphics. And you can use the <laughs> the A button actually do a little bit of a 3D attack on the background objects. Okay. But for those of you who have never played this game, definitely check it out. It should have been one of the premier release titles on the SNES Classic to begin with. If you love your Castlevania games, if you love your Ghosts and Goblins games, you're going to absolutely love Demon's Cross. Notice the ghosts aren't as fast as they are in Ghosts and Goblins. Yes, you can use the, the A button to attack background objects and get stuff. Very, very cool game. But definitely check Demon's Crust out. I mean, incredible game. We got a few more games to go through, but again, don't just beat it. Go back and try some of the levels again because you're going to get different endings and different routes and such. But I'm also going to make sure I show you one of the other uh, games that From Software did before the end of this video. I was thinking, what if they took the concept of uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Super Punch-Out and such, and kind of convert it into a horror-themed game with a bit of a Japanese feel to it. We're going to do that right now. We're going to play a Neo Geo game, which has its done. It's really, really cool. Neo Geo Cross Swords, which is essentially like Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, with a little bit of a horror Japan, feudal Japan theme, should I say. But very, very cool. And again, it also parlays directly into the whole defense as your offense thing today because you cannot just go through the game mashing buttons. You really have to play with defense as your main offense in this game. Okay, we're loading this up now. And there is actually a Crossed Swords 2 on Neo Geo CD as well. Great, great game. We're checking out. And I might have another surprise as far as Cross Swords 2 in the next update as well. But right now we're playing Cross Swords, which is essentially like a Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. And I love anything related to Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Super Punch-Out, Punch-Out on the Wii, which is great. I absolutely love the last character that you have to fight against, which I'm not going to spoil. I'd absolutely love to see Punch-Out and Pilot Wings come out on the Switch. They may be the two games that would make me buy the Switch for sure. And there are a few other games like this, but we're not going to be showcasing them today. Super Spy is another game on Neo Geo, which is quite a bit like this. Please help us. Monsters are attacking our village. And there we go. <laughs> it takes them out right then and there. I got this. And look, it's even a two-player game. You can hold up to do a high block, down to do a low block. But again, try to act accordingly. Don't always mash buttons. It's not going to work on every enemy. I'm really digging this game. Great music. Great, great style here. And I held up the block there. My health is at four and a half bars right now. I held down to do a low block there. Okay. Very, very cool. Kind of surprised me with the high attack there. Great stuff there. Oh geez, two bars of health left. Wait for that high attack. I got that time. Uh, 
Okay, I need help here badly. Oh, I got taken out, but I can continue because it is an arcade game. I'll do better with my second life here. Well, he did the low attack and the high attack. It really feels like I'm playing a much better Power Punch 2. This is a great Punch-Out style game. So if you're a Mike Tyson's Punch-Out fan, definitely check this out. And my defense needs a little bit of work in this game. a little bit better now but really really digging this game this is crosswords one of my favorite Neo Geo games I can make a special attack by simultaneously attacking A and B I really wish this would have been like a Golden Axe game. This would be great with a Golden Axe license. Oh, I'm in a three quarter of a health bar right now. I need some more health. And I went down, but I'm gonna use one more continue. Third time's the charm. And ideally, I'd love to be able to play this game without using continues to really master it. Really cool game. Oh jeez, boss battle. Can I do this? And I have a magic attack. Why not? Come on, attack me. High block. Very, very cool. Okay, we got a couple more games to test out, but again, that's Crossword. Really, really fun game. I'm going to do one more game on SNES, and then I'm going to do that uh, other From Software game as our final video game. This is another game that somebody recommended to me. Um, a great Super Famicom game. You get there. I'm running 145 games in the main user interface right now. Go figure. We're playing G.S. Mikami Jureshi. What a nice body. It is a Mikami Ghost Hunter. Great, great Super Famicom game. Great soundtrack. Thank you for the recommendation. It plays so well within the horse drive against the theme of things here. We're running this with SNES 9X 2005. This is the type of game that I would normally expect to be on the TurboGrafx CD. It is a really cool game. A little bit of a ballast feel to it. <laughs> very, very cool. I can see why they didn't release this in the United States, but it would have been a cool game for sure. But again, like many Turbo Graphics, uh, the Turbo Graphics CD and Turbo Graphics 16, they both flopped in the United States because of their Japanese theme games, and this is very much a Japanese theme game. Way ahead of its time. Feels like Sailor Moon with a little bit of a Splatterhouse feel to it. But again, our final test game today is going to be the From Software game that is called 3 d Game Heroes. That'll be our final test game today. And there will be a horse drive against the Part 10, since many of you asked for one. So let me get over to uh, the last game. And uh, for those of you who are Zelda fans, you're going to be in for an absolute treat with this last game. This is probably out of all my PlayStation 3 games, my absolute favorite of them all. I mean, I have Ninja Gaiden Black on my Xbox, but the game I'm about to play is by far my favorite uh, uh, PS3 game, without a doubt.
3D Dot Game Heroes, it is in essence a great, great Zelda-like game. So much like Zelda, it is ridiculous. But if you at all have a PlayStation 3, you owe it to yourself to pick up this game, if, especially if you're a Zelda fan. And there are actually a few jokes when you talk to townspeople and uh, innkeepers and such related to uh, Demon Souls, which is another game they made on PlayStation 3. So both of these are exclusive to the PlayStation 3. Bloodborne is exclusive to PlayStation 4. They really need to get all of these on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I mean, it would be incredible. This game cannot be forgotten. It needs to be brought back. But this has absolutely everything going for it as far as an, an amazing action game. The moment I played this, I played it all night till I beat it. Incredible game. Really, really upbeat uh, graphics, music, everything going for it. You're going to see in a moment here. Look at this awesomeness. And if you love your Zelda games that aren't quite Zelda games, I mean, this is one of the best examples. Probably the best Zelda game that isn't a Zelda game that I've ever conceivably played in my lifetime. And it gets really ridiculous when you're fully powered up with your sword. I'm not even going to tell you what happens. If it happens while well, I'm playing, awesome. But you can even hold the attack button down and do a little bit of a spin there. This is definitely a great game. Okay. But yes, definitely check it out. And you have to really see the sword at full power to really get a fun gimmick going. It's ridiculous. It's not only a great Zelda light game, it is a great Zelda parody. This is a, as much as South Park is to uh, the RPG genre. Okay, stop playing dodge me here. 